Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a classic so beloved that if you dare step out of line and say that you don't like it, you immediately cast yourself as ignorant and culturally impoverished. And that classic is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. And I didn't like it. Okay, spoiler alert, I didn't like it. So if this is your favorite book, click off this video right now. Or if you're like craving some confrontation, a little bit of cortisol, stick around. I got just what you need. <laughs> Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice has consistently featured in many lists of one of the greatest novels of all time and is widely praised as being Austen's best work. Its heroine, Elizabeth Bennet, is hailed as one of the best female characters in literature, and Mr. Darcy also has his own almost cult-like following. The romantic pairing of Elizabeth and Darcy has led to the creation of many modern retellings such as Bridget Jones' Diary, Ayesha at Last, Sophia Khan is Not Obliged, and of course, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. So I am going to give actual reasons why I think this is an incredibly overrated classic overrated book just in general but first i just want to talk about my experience while reading it it was bad i didn't like it <laughs> it was an overall poor experience i've read a fair few classics okay i have and not all of them i like but none of them have made me feel bored and um this just the only feeling that I had was boredom and I just kept waiting. I kept putting in the time, putting in the effort. Every page just felt like, just like trudging through muddy snow on the way to my own execution. That's too dark. And that made me feel sad. It made me feel sad to feel bored. I'm speaking like someone who just discovered emotions. <laughs> Reason number one why Pride and Prejudice is overrated, the characters are so boring and one-dimensional. And that's something I just can't look past. Mr. Darcy is often portrayed as cold and aloof, and then you've got Elizabeth Bennet, and she's portrayed as independent and headstrong, but past these surface-level character traits that are just kind of slapped on their forehead, the characters lack any sort of nuance or depth. And like, yes, of course, Elizabeth's rejection of two marriage proposals in a society that highly valued matrimony above all else. Yeah, it was a bold move, but her character still lacks the multifaceted complexities of other Austen heroines. The narration heavily emphasizes Elizabeth's liveliness and free-spirited nature, which can feel overdone at times. As well as that, her lack of flaws and near-perfect qualities make her a lackluster character, quite honestly. Adding to this, is the fact that the storytelling is so remote and does not allow readers to delve into Elizabeth's inner thoughts and emotions. Like, the most interesting thing that she does in this book is get her dress muddy. Like, in the Regency era, that's all it took to be a manic pixie dream girl. Just walk in the rain and the mud. They were just flabbergasted. Elizabeth seems to exist on 99% strength and 1% reasonable prejudice. It just does not help that we're not privy at all to any of the characters' feelings or thoughts. I didn't know anyone's deep desires or motivations. And more importantly, I just didn't care, you know? Austin didn't make me want to care. Getting angry. Reason number two. My Pride and Prejudice is a little overrated. The love story sucked. The love story sucked, I'm gonna say it. Look, I am all for enemies to lovers trope. It's a great trope, okay? It's fantastic. But the two main characters had zero chemistry. I have more chemistry with my postman. I mean, he does deliver a lot of Amazon packages, so I've, I've had time to build that rapport. But yeah, they just, they had no razzmatazz, you know? I think that Jane Bennett and Charles Bingley should have been the main love story. Right from the start, Jane and Charles's chemistry is undeniable. Okay, I think he's kind of a player and he essentially ghosts her, which I suppose was quite easily done back in the day. But still, their love story is a lot more appealing. Both characters are sweet, and I found myself like eagerly anticipating their next moves, their next time together. But I just had to hear more about flipping Elizabeth and whose house they're at. It's so dull. <laughs> Darcy's love story feels less grounded in reality and is based more on the idea of each other rather than any tangible chemistry. Now, of course, all of this is just my opinion. My humble, little, culturally impoverished opinion. But I'm not the only one who holds this 
opinion. Let's have a little look at what Charlotte Bronte has to say about Pride and Prejudice, shall we? And let's let's see if she's culturally impoverished. <laughs> in 1848, 31 years after Austen's death, Charlotte Bronte picked up Pride and Prejudice on the recommendation of friend and literary critic George Henry Lewis. Bronte, the author of grim romance Jane Eyre, wasn't backwards about coming forward with her criticism. She said, why do you like Miss Austen so very much? I'm puzzled at that point. And what did I find? An accurate, daguerreotyped portrait, but no glance at a bright, vivid physiognomy, no open country, no fresh air, no blue hill, no bonny beck. I should hardly like to live with her ladies and gentlemen in their elegant but confined houses. Ralph Waldo Emerson had this to say, I am at a loss to understand why people hold Miss Austen's novels at so high a rate, which seems to me vulgar in tone, sterile in artistic invention, imprisoned in the wretched conventions of English society, without genius, wit, or knowledge of the world. Never was life so pinched and narrow. <laughs> Suicide is more respectable. <laughs> wow, okay, Ralph, tell us how you really feel. And then Mark Twain, I often want to criticize Jane Austen, but her books madden me so that I can't conceal my frenzy from the reader, and therefore I have to stop every time I begin. Every time I read Pride and Prejudice, I want... Mark, that's too much, my friend. Um... Every time I read Pre Every time I read Pride and Prejudice, <laughs> I want to dig her up and beat her over the skull with her own shin bone. Sir. <laughs> I think you need a little bit of therapy there. So if you hate me because of this video, I think you should hate Mark Twain a lot more. Now would be a good time to tell you I didn't finish the book. I did not finish it. <laughs> so I would recommend instead of Pride and Prejudice, okay, I would recommend Pugs and Prejudice, okay? It's the exact same story. It is. But they're all pugs. They're all pugs. Okay, that's all. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't hate me. Or do, you know what, I don't care.